Do you remember when I made this triangular shaped tank? Each one of these is a track and it can move in any direction. Well, this video is using your suggestions to make this better. The tank is omnidirectional, that means it can move forwards, backwards and left and right or diagonally or any combination out of 360 degrees. It can also turn on the spot. Each track has little wheels mounted in each segment which allows them to slide sideways. This is really similar to other omnidirectional robots I've built which use various types of omnidirectional wheels. This seemed like it would work well but it was really bad at climbing over things which is what tanks are generally supposed to be good at. Two tracks at an angle like that just slipped on the edge of most objects and it couldn't get traction. Also, as the front of the tank was lifted up, the back edge was pivoted off the ground, which didn't have any drive in that direction anyway. The main suggestions to improve this from the comments on the original video were to make the track style a trapezoidal shape like a traditional tank, and also to have each section able to pivot so each track could comply with the terrain. Also, at least one person suggested moving the little wheels in each track segment to the outside of the tracks so that they can help grip better on the corners as the track approaches objects. Right, it's time to 3D print all the parts! There's quite a lot of parts to make, and of course we've got to make three lots of everything to make the three tracks. So those are the sides of the parts being printed, and these are also the track links. Just a quick thanks to my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. And thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project, all of this is printed in Pro PLA+. There are 34 track links in each of the tracks, and those of course fit together, and there'll be some steel rod in there to make hinges, and then the little wheels fit in all around the outside. So I'm just using some 3mm steel axle material I got from an educational website for this, um, which is pretty soft stuff, but it's easy to cut and easy to sort the ends out. So there's going to be a piece holding each wheel and one piece between each of the track links. So with that fitted together, you can see that the track slides sideways and of course it bends up quite well so we can get a nice tight curve on there to go around our sprockets. And of course we need it to be longer than that, so here it is with the complete 34 links in. My little wheels are TPU, so those should grip pretty well, especially being on the outside of the track this time. We need some sprockets to drive that though, so these are the ends of the sprockets, and the middle has got this profile, and that profile is actually a T5 pulley. So those just screw on there with some self-tapping screws. And I've also got this idler wheel, which has a TPU tyre, and it's got this middle piece, and you can see there's a kind of recess there so it doesn't pop off and that makes an idler wheel, and there's only one of those in the middle of the tracks at the bottom. I'm using some generic 6 volt gear head motors there, and that has a T5 pulley fitted, and it's fitted to a 3D print. So that T5 of course goes onto the T5 profile in the middle of the sprocket, so that we can drive the tracks from the motor. So I've got four of those, and one idler per set of tracks, and I've just put studding through there with some nuts on, so there's no bearings, it's just running studding on plastic. So those my idler in the middle there, we've got the motor and we've got the four sprockets and one of those is driven. And we've got these lumps here which are to separate the two sides. So we can just screw on the other side there, I do have washers in between the plastic and the nuts on the end of the sprockets, but that's about it. Now we've got one here which has a separate piece, and that's so I can tension the track out. So basically this is the fourth attempt to get the tension right by slowly increasing the whole distance that holds this sprocket so I can just reprint that piece rather than having to reprint everything. So there's the complete assembly, so we can see that belt is driving one of the sprockets okay. So now all we need to do is fit the track around there, and it looks like it doesn't reach, but in fact if I were to get all of the sprockets in the holes then the 34 links should be exactly right. And of course I've had to make three of them. But before we put that together, it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor, which is brilliant. Understanding the big ideas behind data and computer science is essential to building a successful career in tech. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks and more, with new lessons added monthly. The computer science courses are great if you want to learn coding. They start with graphical programming tools so you can get to grips with the basics before more advanced learning. 
Brilliant is an essential tool for professionals. Brilliant's visual hands-on approach is such an effective and engaging way to master the key concepts behind today's technology, which is critical to staying ahead. It's built for busy people. The lessons are bite-sized, so they break down important concepts into understandable parts. Brilliant is the most effective way to learn. To really learn anything, you've got to go through it and do it, just like the way I learned to build robots. It's like having a personal learning coach. Helpful explanations along the way never leave you guessing what's being discussed in the lessons. And Brilliant helps you build analytical skills. With Brilliant, you learn how to think. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash James Bruton or click the link in the video description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Right, let's get this together and see how well it works. Those are going to be attached to this middle part, which is basically a big 3D print with some 10mm studding on, which will allow each of the tracks to pivot. So that goes through a hole through both sides of the track sections. In the middle of that, we've got a tray here, which is to fit electronics in, and that consists of an Arduino Mega and three motor drivers. I've also got this orange RC receiver, and that's so I can use the RC transmitter that I made, which is a DSM-2 transmitter, and that has various sticks, which are three axes each, and various switches. We don't need that many axes, though. We really only need three for this project. So I can receive the data with the Arduino there, so check out the video on this remote I made a few weeks ago. And you'll notice that I've also got another line there for each axis, which is the smoothed axes. And that basically is some motion filtering, which doesn't let the values change too quickly. So we get this nice deceleration and it smooths out any lumps and bumps. I actually made a specific video on motion filtering and I built this animatronic head with some really cheap servos and an Arduino Uno and that's all that's controlling it so you don't need anything expensive to make robots move smoothly and all it's doing is taking a large percentage of the previous value and a small percentage of the new value on each code loop and that means the value can't change too quickly and we get this nice smooth motion. So that is all the electronics wired in, which is PWM pins to the motor drivers, power to the motor drivers, and the motors wired into the motor drivers. And on top of that, I've got a lid, and that's got a recess in there to put the battery in with a nice Velcro strap so that I can just power everything from one battery. So now we just need some code to work out the wheel velocities and directions. So obviously driving in a circle is really easy. We just send them all in the same direction. If we want to drive forwards or backwards, that's easy as well, because we can just drive two of the tracks forward or backwards and not drive the other track. But if we want to go sideways, we need to drive one track sideways and the others in opposite directions. And we also need to calculate the correct velocities. Now these tracks are 120 degrees apart. And that means that one of them is 60 degrees in difference from the others, so it's 60 degrees from the vertical. The cosine of 60 degrees is 0.5, and that means we need to drive this track 0.5 times faster than the other two. So after I've used the function for the motion filtering I already mentioned, what I'm actually doing is driving two of the tracks at two thirds of the speed of the other one. And that means the third track goes 50% faster. So we can drive forwards and backwards now with just running two of those tracks and the other one sliding on the little wheels. And we can drive sideways by driving that track sideways and driving the other ones in the correct direction at two thirds of the speed. And of course we can turn on the spot as well and all of those axes mix together with that little addition algorithm I showed in the code. So we can do anything, we can move in any direction in 360 degrees and rotate while we do it. So there are some slight issues mechanically. I probably should have used two motors per track in those top two sprockets because the motors are labouring a bit. There's quite a bit of friction in this one due to all of those sprockets running on plastic. But apart from that, it's good enough for our purposes to test whether it will climb over obstacles better than the previous model. First of all, we're going to try that bit of wood that the previous model failed on. So let's try that. And with those wheels at the edge, the tracks have no problem gripping it. The problem is, of course, that we can't get the back edge over because it's now stuck because of those little wheels, which really aren't big enough. However, with a bit of practice, if I turn round and work out which way I'm facing, which is actually quite tricky, if I roll the tracks on individually, then they have no problem climbing up and having them on pivots helps quite a bit as well. Yeah, it's quite confusing to work out which way I'm facing. The yellow battery connector is actually forwards, so I just have to keep an eye on that and work out which way my remote is. 
But yeah, eventually if I can roll all the wheels on so they all drive on correctly, then there's no problem getting over that edge. And once it's all on, I can drive off the other side. So I'm just going to do that a few more times for some practice before we try some other obstacles. It looks like those pivots are really helping to make the tracks comply with the surface. I'm sure it would probably still work without them, although we might get grounded, so I'm pretty happy we've got that feature. I've got various aluminium extrusion to try here, so some 2060 it looks like and some 4040. So again, there's no problem just driving up with those two treads, but of course the back one is going to get stuck unless I try to rotate onto it. And once I've rotated onto it, it's got no problem climbing over it. It's just tricky to remember which way round I am so that I can rotate and move sideways in the correct direction. Now the slight problems occurred there with that backtrack you can just see out of shot where it's got caught and then turned itself almost upside down. So that tall piece of extrusion is causing me quite a few issues. So if I remember which way to drive in, yeah maybe there should have been some restriction on that pivot so it can't do this basically and swivel completely up the other way. So after a bit of jiggling we can eventually get there without swiveling that track up the other way. So we just need to turn in the correct direction and make sure that the track is aligned. Right, let's just try and drive back the other way there. I don't think it's going to drive over both those bits of extrusion. It's probably just going to push that one out of the way. But yep, now I've got the hang of it and I can rotate those tracks onto the step as I go. Then I can clear them and drive over them. So it's much better than the previous one. So I think we probably should have made these little wheels bigger, but of course if we make them too big they'll touch each other where the track bends round on the corners here. So then we'd have to basically make the sprockets bigger so that there's not such a tight bend here. And then eventually to make the wheels bigger and bigger we'd end up with less and less radius on here. So basically we just end up with a massive omni wheel in the end and we might as well have an omni wheel. And I've already built a project like that anyway that you can check out in my channel. I'll publish all the Canon code for this as usual and that's on GitHub and the remote is also there as well which I did a few weeks ago. So if you want to build one or do anything else then this is all open source. So if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership then you can and those links are below as well. And YouTube channel members and patrons get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up and Discord benefits.